Hello viewers, and welcome back to Endless Legend. Welcome back to this, uh, this Mazarian Endless game. Intro's a little bit, uh, a little bit less energetic there, but I feel like it fits with the music. <laughs> Alright, so we have to, first of all, continue our faction quest, which means getting our extractors off. Let me turn on the axes. I like the axes. Alright, in two turns we'll have this. In considerably more turns we will have this. We're gonna have to... How many turns do we have left on these guys? Alright, three more turns with this city's population assigned to influence. We have to build some ships and we have to decide what we want to do in the capital. The Megapole is such a big difference. Like It, makes, it, ma it matters so much for the purpose of producing units and producing armies that I think we're going to go for it. If we realistic, if we want to have a realistic chance of uh, beating the AI in the oceans, the Megapole is going to help a lot with that. So we'll put it right here. We'll be able to build around it and level it up quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the right place for it. Here's hoping. 21 turns is a lot. Alright, so let's make use of our teleport ability, shall we? Uh, you can't teleport a unit that has no move. Oh. Apparently this is happening too. Okay, so we do have access to both of the resources. In addition, a lot of blood crystal. Somebody else just hit era four? Yeah, okay. Did somebody... huh. Alright. Oh yeah, so what I was saying is you can't teleport if you have no move left, and teleporting uses up the rest of your move. So... It's still a very efficient way to get around. And we'll definitely be able to uh, stop these guys from destroying the village that they came from. Okay. We want to get our extractors going. Let's talk a little bit about these unique techs that we have available here. So we can get extra fortification on our cities. And we can get a lot of extra science from improved, from leveled up districts. Endless recycling is incredible. It's so good. But it's not any good for us yet because we don't really have any, we, I, we don't have any level 2 districts anywhere in our whole empire. So, one thing at a time. Alright. So we are now on plus 6. Ah, uh, we don't, we're not going to have this up for such a long time. We're actually hemorrhaging dust right now. We need to fix that. The capital needs to remain on industry because the megapole has to get done. But these cities I think we might pull off. We still have, like, governors to buy. Like, we need a lot of dust. How are we set on our empire plan? This would require 160 influence. It would be really nice, though. I mean, it would be really nice to do a lot more, but we can't really at this moment. Uh, the, the biggest way we're going to improve our influence generation is by leveling up our districts. It's way, way better to do that than to assign a bunch of people to... Uh, to influence. So, if we wanted to get to 180, we have six turns left. We would have to be making 30 influence a turn. I don't think that that's feasible. Uh, so we're just going to not try for it then. Yeah, I don't think there's any way we can do that. Hold on. What, what are the payouts of our quests? We don't even get to know the payout of this part. Alright, yeah. Not feasible. We'll just stick to our science, uh... Stick to our science boost. We'll have to earn all our dust the old-fashioned way. Exploitation of land around us. Oh, the wine wore off. How unfortunate. So what are we at? We're at... We're unhappy right now. We do need... 
Actually, I'm gonna... Uh, let's do Bread and Circuses before we do Smelting Station. Bread and Circuses will reduce our expansion disapproval, uh, which will increase our gather rate on all of our resources. And we really just... We need ways of improving our approval right now. We're in a little bit of a dire place. This should be totally trivial. These guys are still heavily injured from the last... I'm not even gonna bother... Uh, reapportioning here. We're just gonna let them have it. Okay. Our borders are finally secure. So, where's a landmass? Do I see another landmass? Like a landmass that has any unclaimed territory? It looks like the answer is no. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, well, let's go gather pearls. Okay, we can pull these guys over onto something a little bit more useful, like the industry that the city desperately needs. Okay, we can't reactivate our booster this turn. That's a shame. And we're not actually bringing in very much in the way of resources. We need to start gathering the blood crystals uh, more for the plus 10 approval than for the plus attack. Oof. I have not played the beginning of this game all that well, I feel. We're in a little bit of a rough situation here. Oh, we just got black spotted. Well, the Morgar AI has decided that uh, we should be made the target of the world. This is a problem. Well, maybe it's a problem. Oh, thank god. Dust production returns to normal. And we will reactivate our booster. Okay. It might be a problem. It may be that none of the AIs care. We might get lucky and have the AIs not uh, not pounce on us. All right, and this uh, single pearl pearl deposit is of pretty low value. All right, so heroes right now are they're going to be six hundred by the time we can afford one easily. Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble as far as getting heroes. We need the winter to end. Uh, and then we need lots of other cool stuff to happen. Basically, we need we need to win the lottery a little bit here. All right, that helps. We're at fifty-seven dust per turn. Still a really long time on this. We do have two turns left on the uh, the next step of our faction quest. Not to mention the fact that we just need the glass steel and the titanium income, like, really badly. Okay, well, Paul needs to make some things of its own. Well, Paul needs to level up. We need, we need districts. So let's start building our cities out, shall we? Uh, I think the thing that makes the most sense for Mapal, obviously, is to try and go like this so that we get access to that anomaly. I think it's more important to get these builds done quickly than it is to get, uh, to get that dust per turn. May as well merge these guys up. Sadly, my standing army has very little to do. We're basically just playing defense. Yeah, there was no way we were going to be able to get to 160. It would have required devoting too many of our citizens to crummy, crummy outputs when we still have, like, a lot of basic building to do. Alright, so let's see what the next step of our faction quest yields. That's something we can do while we're waiting. Ah, it yields a... <laughs> 
Alright. So we got the Deep Diviner. Plus six initiative on units. Wow, that is a very expensive trinket. They are unlikely to leave us in peace, so it will be war. Yeah, I, I guess, man. Oh, this is stopping the production of our uh, <laughs> of our megapole, though. Keep the spice booster rolling. God, we need we need everything. I can't believe there's a single. Maybe this question, maybe this step of this quest should be a little bit more difficult. It seems like a lot of the um, a lot of the faction quest stuff that involves. AI controlled armies spawning to fight you is like really really easy I think a lot of these should be toned up it should be that I understand that it would be a real bummer to advance your faction quest and then just get totally owned build the winter shelters in Mapal for 25 Titan bones I will do that um, and then get totally owned and have trouble even uh, continuing the game but the other option is that this happens, where that was a total joke. Ooh, plus food on water terrain tiles. Well, that benefits the capital, and only the capital. Ah, uh, and we have our food and our uh, circuses. I don't know that. I don't know if it's factored in yet. Also, forty-one percent is not unhappy. That'll update in a turn here. All right, so the winter shelter's improving. It's going to cost glass steel because glass steel is the holy resource. Twenty, in fact. Okay. What's up? You want to remove the black spot? Oh. This is strange. They don't want anything from me? I accept. What was I going to refuse? Alright. At the very least, gathering pearls, even if we don't intend to use them ourselves, uh, gathering pearls is just good, um, it's good trade value. Damn it. 38%. We need to research central markets. And sewers, too, but central markets, I think, are more valuable. Okay, and we've been market banned. Ah, uh, they wanted to pull the blue, the black spot off of us because they, they needed to apply it to somebody else. Okay, that makes sense. I see now belly slicer so uh, the green player of course is a necrophage a necrophage who apparently is putting some pressure on red oh you know what I guess these guys could be doing we don't did we research shipyard I think we did right yeah 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 what these guys could be doing is getting in the water and getting that somebody done built a guardian So yeah, let's go get a quest done. Or go get a uh, get a ruin search done. A little bit of XP, possibly. A little bit of payout. And then who will it be? Who will it be that we go to go to war with first? I think it's gonna be pink. It's just really easy for us to uh, mass up an attack on Myrinus. Didn't find anything. Uh, red has de attacked and defeated ten armies of other empires. It seems like red might be having a really good game. We might have to uh, might have to be prepared to deal with them. But picking on pink will be good for us in a lot of ways. <sighs> Holy resource ran out. What are we gonna do? Oh, I guess get the dust dredger up. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, I'm market banned, right? Well, in that case, I don't need to be saving for heroes. We can trade with blue to remove the market ban, and those uh, all these pearls that we're picking up might be useful for that. Uh, you know what? We might just go to Titanium as the holy resource for a little while. Yeah, we'll get the plus science for a bit. Our troops are a little bit weaker this way, but 
I don't think it's a big deal. I am not going to have our army explore on the ocean because we would be uh, trivially destroyed by even a small number of ships. Uh, it's just asking for trouble, basically. Alright, eight turns into the Megapole. We're about to have a birth, so it might... The birth might take a turn off. It's possible. It's also possible that it would have been better to assign people to food to force this birth early and then get seven citizens working industry. Yeah, I bet it would have been. We would had to have... We would have, we would have had to have done the math. Okay, 25 Titan bones. Pop that immediately. Moves us up to content and gives us a big industry boost. So we'll get this done in half the remaining time. That's lovely. Asala Arca is going to... Uh, we're going to rush her to Firestarter. So big science gains in addition to our... Uh, we'll, get, we'll get weapons tech, but... Uh, Let's fix our economy first. So we have to build two new burrows in Mapal for the next step of the faction quest. So maybe I want to focus on doing that. I actually don't have the um, population for that right now. Oh, well, but I will in four turns. I'll be at six. Yeah, let's focus on getting that done. We will build the extractors. It'll happen. But uh, maybe we need to... We need to do our faction quest because we need value. We just need stuff. We need to be doing things that are helpful to us and be getting additional rewards for doing so and finishing quests that are uh, on your line of development is a great way of doing that. Uh, like I said, keep working on that economy. This city can't benefit from a dredger. Alright, yeah, we get, we just gotta get some districts leveled up, man. We have to <clears throat> get into a position where we can take advantage of all of the bonus science from our unique tech. The spices have run out and we don't have any more. While we're still managing to barely hold on to content. This is not the most exciting game I've ever had. We're definitely having a little bit of trouble with our ocean development. Not being able to secure an ocean region early hurt us a lot. But once Manure is done with the Megapole, we can start pumping fire ships out. Okay, food production is back to normal. Yeah, so we're gonna uh, upgrade our fire ship design. Obviously, we have enough glass, steel, and titanium that we can at least make our fire ships a little bit better. It'd be nice to be able to get Palladian and Adamantian gear onto them, though. I guess we'll research uh, new weapons after the dust refinery tech ends. And we did it. So the Megapole is really useful because industry is really useful. Uh, how long does it take us to build? Well, we should actually we have to get this up. I know, I know. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Just, just trust me. Just have a little faith. We're going we're gonna to get there. Oh, there's cliffs everywhere, man. All right. I'm going to have a little look over here. Because if we go to war with Pink, I think the plan is going to be try to steal this sea region from them and try to get this. All right. Paul needs to build another... Uh, we're one turn short of being able to work on our next burrow, but we could build our altar here. In fact, I think we are going to build our altar here. Because... I think this city's pretty much spoken for. We need a lot of Pearl Districts, unfortunately. Uh, what was that second winter that we just went through? Oh, it, no, none of this matters until we have our altar anyway. I can't interact with that screen at all yet. But yeah, I think my 
my next goal is going to be the claiming of this sea region and this uh, this tile over here, this region over here. Unfortunately, Pink is also Vaulters, so we're not going to be able to just cut them off from their army. They will have the ability to teleport their army to that city's defense. Uh, cargo docks would be useful. I think new weapons is a good idea. Alright, so is this going to count as a borough? No, it's not a borough, it's a district. That's fine. Mapal will almost be triangled by the time we finish the mission center quest then. Alright, so let's get over here. We don't know what else is in the sea region. There might be some easy sea ruins. Oh! Okay. That did work. Capture the city Donadan. Donadan. Well, I think this is not Donadan, or the city center would have the rays of dust over it, I'm pretty sure. Or make sure it has been destroyed in order to discover what remains of the ancient site that it was built on. Well, that's gonna be awkward. If this isn't if this turns out to actually not be Donadan, like I'm pretty sure it isn't, yeah, that's gonna be tricky for us. I definitely feel behind. I screwed up somewhere here. Please get the Palladium Extractor going. We need this uh, pretty badly. Oh, Oiven is done with its very basic stuff. Stealing your pearls. Oh right, Pink has closed their borders to us. We can go in their ocean regions, but we cannot get within the uh, the border of this land, which means we probably will not be able to find out what that region is called. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that it's not uh, it's not done again because I think if it was, the city would have the the quest indicator on it. Donadan might be over here. It might be that it's worth building a boarding vessel just to scout around. Also, it's probably going to be worth it. We're making a lot of money now. Uh, no, no, no. We're making a lot of money now, so it might be worth it to uh, talk to Blue about getting market access back. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. The good news is that if we can take this, uh, if we can take this region, we'll be butting up against Blue, who is roving clans and cannot declare war on us. I think I do want to keep the science boost rolling for now. Well, we'll figure out where our faction quest is aiming us eventually, but I still think this is our primary concern. Okay, open wounds, not super relevant to us. They would like bread and circuses in exchange for the removal of the market ban. This is actually really well timed, and I don't have to pay, uh, pay any influence for this to happen, so I'm going to accept that deal. Alright. We do have to be careful, I guess. Um... Blue could still attack us if red drops the black mark on us after we take this, so we have to be wary of that. Okay, we need governors. Uh, Nachamp Nachamp Nachampasessa is not great. Julian's not great. Uh, DeFore the second is not awesome, but it is worth noting that um, these guys, Morgar heroes, have a skill that dramatically reduces the uh, cost of naval unit production in their city, and also that gives approval for every city you have that is uh, exploiting at least one ocean tile. So it might not be the worst thing in the world to put one of these in our capital, at least for a while. 
Uh, it's looking like there aren't really any strong governors. Expansion support 2 is okay. It reduces the amount of expansion disapproval that affects the city he's governing. Um, but these guys have a pretty weak governor tree as well. Yeah, this is just a sad, sad group of, uh, of heroes. Maybe we could wait. Obviously, I'm a little nervous about waiting because we could get banned again at any time. But I mean, any hero, at least, has the capability to uh, to go up the middle tree. These guys are not awesome governors. Plus, food on terrain with river is cool, and they do give you some extra um, influence. But their faction tree is awkwardly constructed, so it's hard to reach over into the common tree from it. And most of the skills don't really, you know. These guys do still give a lot of dust. Like, Dust Boost 1 isn't awesome, but still we get a lot of dust out of the skills, and Mining Authority is great. You know what, I think we're going to hire this guy and have him be the governor of the capital. I know it's not awesome, but it's better than having the slot be empty. And we do have uses for dust. It's slightly better than having the slot be empty. Titan boats have run out, which is sad. I'm bummed out about that. So, now we have some options again. Uh, we could go back and get a couple of things. We don't have access to the resource market yet, and um, the resource market is really powerful, but it's risky to spend research time on this with a roving clans player in the game who seems not to particularly like us. We could reach out to more science. We could get cargo docks, which would be very helpful in all of our cities once we, you know, burrow out to the water. This is about to be useful, but maybe not useful enough. We're getting close to having some actually developed cities. You know what, let's just do what we're good at. Let's uh, lean into... Science. Try to get ahead a little bit. We're not that... F oh, sorry. Try to catch up first, and then from there get ahead a little bit. We're not actually uh, very far off of the science curve, it seems like. We're only... We are exactly one era behind as of the last thing we completed. Which sounds bad, but really isn't, especially when you consider where you start. Uh, relative to a... Uh, relative to an endless AI. Yeah, our cities are just a little bit low, uh... Here, we're gonna make landfall. I wanna scout this sea a little bit, I've decided. Try to see if we can at least tell where Dunden is. And the quickest way to do that is gonna be to land, um, go to Oyvind, and then teleport to Manura Rexos. Probably Rexos. Okay, this time we have enough influence to do this, and I think it's a good idea. We don't have a lot of cities focused on dust right now, but we can... And it will have some immediate effect, at least, from Rexos. We're going to go from 26 dust per turn to... We're going to gain about 3 times uh, three times 8. Well, minus a little bit because of our, uh, our negative modifier from approval. So it will, you know, close to double our dust. What level of unhappiness are we at right now? Minus 50 or minus 20%. Okay, eh, it's not too bad. It's still significant. Alright, so let's teleport to Rexos. I do so love the teleport. Let's very, very slowly build some things. Alright, we have our holy uh, resource, or we have our resource income up now. Adamantian is a potential holy resource because of the plus industry, which is something that we still really do need at this point in the game. 
Uh, unfortunately, there's no way we're going to be able to use this as a holy resource before the start of the next winter, considering that we're talking about a maximum of five turns. Um, having an advanced holy resource, or having an advanced resource marked as your holy resource during the winter can be really valuable because obviously it can help you build up a stockpile quite quickly. So we see this city really could take advantage of the advanced pearl types, although we're a little short on pearls for that. Okay, somebody else built the museum. I'm not, uh, I'm not shocked. Alright, it's possible that what I want to do is fan these units out. Uh, first of all, to reduce the amount of damage that we take when we have to retreat from oncoming ships. And secondly, of course, to cover a lot more ground. Yeah, it's possible that I just really needed to commit to the ocean more. I tried to I tried to do a sort of a half and half thing, and I think it really bit us in the ass. We could have had probably control over a sea region if I had worked to make the you know a functional fleet of boarding vessels. They don't have to be great. They just have to be able to beat a couple of neutral ships in combat, so you can take a region by force and hold it for a little while. And then you can use all the extra resources and stuff. Like, imagine if we had Nirenus this whole time, and we were getting uh, facilities of both of these resources, plus, yeah, plus eight more dust per turn all that time, plus extra wine. Yeah, it would have been something. Uh, no. I will not trade you an extremely good technology for open borders. I don't even know where purple is. That wasn't purple, it was pink. No, yeah, I don't care about that. I think mostly the AI gives you offers like those um, to taunt you. It's just being a dick, basically. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so we're just going to fan out a little bit. See if we can find some land masses or some more ruins or something. If we could figure out where Donaden is, that would have some value. Okay, I think this is a good time to go back and get Imperial Coinage. It's not necessarily the case that we're going to benefit from Imperial Coinage, but like I said before, uh, sometimes you end up in a situation where researching building-based technology is not useful, and we are in one of those situations right now. Our production queues are all clogged up. We have a lot of stuff to do. Okay, and then this guy's play is to try to get back to base. We're going to get some vision here. Alright, come on. Tell me what this region is called. Okay, this is Dunedin. It's not a bad city. It has a Titan Bone deposit in it. 546. Jesus. Okay, so our faction quest is trying to steer us into war against red instead of against pink. I think we probably need to uh, plan on turning around both of these southern two guys. I'm not opposed to war against red. We gotta get those fire ships up, though. Oh, this is not a good time for winter to fall. We do not need our movement abbreviated even more. Actually, let us return to the land and prepare. Ordinarily, our unit would have uh, survived there, but uh, remember, Open Wounds is still on, right? Is that the case? Yeah, two more turns. Ordinarily, our guy would have, survi would have survived because he would have regenerated a small amount of health, so losing 50% of his max HP would not, uh, would not hurt him again. By the way, some jerk has the dust, accum dust accumulator facility. We are definitely getting our asses kicked because we are not, not into the ocean. Alright, 
right, let's get the capital is now done with the really important infrastructure building. I think, honestly, the dust refinery is one of the most important buildings in the game. Maybe that's just an artifact of my play style, it's entirely possible, but I feel like until I get my dust refineries, I'm in a pretty rough place, and then I get my dust refineries, and all of a sudden, everything is perfect. How is this? Take control of the Bastion in Meridus. Well, we will be attempting to do that. Maybe, like, not right away, but soon. Alright, I'm just gonna... Well, you know what? I'll do it next turn. I'm gonna have her run over here and grab these, and then reassign her to get her out of Unfriendly Waters. Okay, Bishop Julian immediately applying additional dust. And we need to make ships. So, we now have access to some advanced gear. Let's have a look at what we're talking about on these ships. So we probably want to do something like this. Right, we have access to this armor. The difference, uh, 26 health and 34 defense versus 10 health and 16 defense, I think... Uh, almost certainly worth the strategics. It's, I think this is an even bigger difference. 58-28 versus 24-12, yeah. Um, fire ships really benefit from just being alive to dish out more attacks because the more things they can set on fire, the better. So we have two options with the fire ship. Number one, Endless Flames. Uh, affl afflicted units lose 10% of their life each round for three rounds. You set people on fire, and this causes uh, this causes some splash damage. You can see 75% damage to the target and opponents next to both the target and the attacker. These guys don't really fire ships don't really do a lot of damage. It's mostly about setting stuff on fire. Or we could get the dust focal laser, uh, which reduces enemies' attack and does a beam strike, so it'll hit the enemy and then things that are behind the enemy basically we're gonna go for fire I do believe so you'll notice it doesn't ramp up our damage at all it does give us additional defense maybe actually you know what I've always used fire ships for fire but maybe it's worth going for the extra damage oh and of course uh, Fomorian Slayer. Now, my read on this was that it only dealt damage to, it only caused bonus damage to minor factions, and that was based entirely on just what I thought developer intent was. Uh, but we saw during the last game, it does appear to be that it's just damage dealt to, this is considered a Fomorian unit, you can see, the Fomorian faction. Uh, it deals damage to player ships that are Fomorian designs, which means all of the ships, except for the Vor and the Leviathan unique units that are available to the Morgaur. So unfortunately, this will not help us against the, uh, against his Vors, but he may build fire ships, he may build artillery ships, and the production cost increase at this point is pretty small. Uh, 400 to 450 is much smaller than 100 to 150, especially uh, in the early game when you're every point every uh, every turn is precious so am I gonna try the lasers on these guys I never have before it seems like you're probably not going to get any value out of lining up opponents behind your uh, your target very often that seems like it would be hard to take advantage of but more upfront damage and the fact that it reduces their attack. Again, this would be less valuable if you're fighting other fire ships, but if we're fighting Vores and stuff, um, the Vores do deal the majority of their damage with that actual initial hit, so minus 30% attack might be relevant. I'm gonna try it. We're gonna learn some things here. Let's do some science. Okay, so that fire ship is 450 uh, industry to build. It's a little expensive. It's gonna take a couple of turns. Uh, we need to get a couple of these out, though. We need to have a navy. We're bringing in only two per turn of these resources. Uh, so we, we need to start getting control of the oceans from red. We need to see if we can take this region. <sighs> this is going to be tough. It's going to be tough to make headway. Oh man, Donadan has two Titan Bone deposits. That would be incredible to take. Do I want to run the Titan Bone or the Titanium again, or do I want to switch? I think I want to run the Titanium again. 
Uh, it only takes us two turns to recoup almost all of the booster cost. Now that we have two uh, extractors. Alright, let's just warp you back over here so that you can't be caught and murdered, because I'm pretty sure that's what those guys were headed to do. I wish I had not done this move the way I did it, because I actually really want to look at his units. So let's see if we can get vision on those Vores real quick here. Alright, we're going to be able to afford some more heroes uh, pretty shortly here. And with Imperial Coinage up, we can now, we can now buy luxuries. Okay, so he does have a boarding vessel. He's mostly working with Vores. Pretty tough Vores. 126 defense, 349 life, jeez. Uh, maybe I should change this design, actually. Because our attack is so low that it might be we're better off just setting them to burn slowly to death. Buffing the damage of our attack is going to be somewhat um, somewhat irrelevant. Mm, not really a lot of new heroes available on the market. If so, watch is not too bad. Industry efficiency 2 plus, uh, plus the natural industry talents of the Wild Walker faction. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'd like Ipsawatcha. We might even have him go to Manure and move this hero to Rexos to take advantage of this river instead. Is this... Nope. Don't care. Don't care about you opening your borders. Yeah, this is gonna be tough. So the Vor 2s only have Acid Spray 1, which means that they don't have upgraded weapons. They still have attack and defense, or attack and damage, so much in, in excess of ours. Alright, I am going to switch us to the uh, Flamethrowers. And we'll cancel this guy. And we can just retrofit this one when he's done. Huh. Well, what are we going to do? Guys, we need approval. Alright, what luxuries are available? What would be helpful for us to buy? We can't buy enough Titan Bones. Ah, but we can buy enough Moonleaf to make a difference. We can also buy a lot of wine. If you're not already fervent, wine pretty much always pays for itself. You can see the improvement in our uh, in our approval levels is significant. Uh, do I want to buy anything else? Actually, I probably don't really have the money. I'd love to get Moonleaf, but we can't buy 25 Moonleaf at because the first 10 would be at 11.7 each. But then the next 10 are going to be more expensive due to rising demand. Alright, yeah, but moving up to uh, two approval categories the way we did there has some pretty large effects. Our cities are going to be more productive in every way. Mapal is turning out to be actually a pretty valuable city. All right, this borough is actually approval positive because it subtracts five approval from our city the way boroughs always do. Or, sorry, subtracts ten, but then it adds fifteen by leveling up this borough. So this, uh, this, this one's going to be plus five, and then the one we build here is actually going to be plus ten because it'll level up both of these. I guess we actually probably should make landfall and uh, start grabbing uh, grabbing pearls.
Yeah, this is not great. So we'll grab this and then we'll go back to the city and teleport to Mopal and grab that. Alright, Rexos is sadly going to have to pull off of approve or um, dust now. We actually do need to get some things built. first of our actual ships is complete. I was hoping to get a little bit more love off of this uh, Megapole. We can increase its output by another 25 by leveling it up. It's expensive. Well, I think we want the Abbey of Anomalies anyway. It's just a really good building. Or a really good uh, district. It does seem like it's taking an awfully long time for the AI to calculate some of their turns. I'm not sure what they're doing. Oh. Oh, the Band of Merriment! I forgot all about this! Yeah, okay, so we should make a couple of Delvers for the capital. Uh, this is a quest you can get while you have the Delvers assimilated. I totally forgot that we did. Uh, how much would a couple of dredges be? Wow, six turns of production, really. 656 each. But obviously the Band of Merriment is significant. Plus 15 approval in every city that has a governor is, uh, is a big deal. Alright, sadly you must sit and wait. God, it's going to take such a long time to make a functional navy. Alright, we got to get an Abbey of Anomalies. Uh, oh, it didn't, right, it didn't purchase because it wasn't my turn when we clicked. Okay. We got to get an Abbey of Anomalies up here pretty quickly. Uh, lots and lots of food from this tile. And then we need to get a straight burrow here. And we need to get either an intensifier or just a burrow here. Actually, let's not worry about this. That's important for triangling the city, but it doesn't actually contribute to leveling the Megapole. So if we could gather another t another 18 pearls, we'd have enough to buy the intensifier design and, pu and put down an intensifier. And it's worth noting that the intensifier, uh, the part where it doubles resource extraction, uh, I'm not sure how it interacts with our thing, with our uh, our natural doubled resource extraction, but plus 10 science from the tile seems pretty okay. Our overall empire science is only 517, so plus 10 will still be felt. It's not a huge bonus, but it is a bonus. Alright, and our, our dust is still in a pretty good place even without Rexos working on dust. Okay. We got some new heroes available. Uh, somebody purchased that Wild Walker. This guy has an industry efficiency one, which isn't horrible. Uh, we also have... Sem Senate and Wana, who has food boost two, influence boost three. Not bad at all. Food efficiency, slavery, um, science boost one with some interesting stuff. So this guy's a haunt. He's the only hero in the game that has the haunt faction tree. He has alchemical genius just like a vaulter does. But he has some skills that are a little bit, obviously, more relevant. And his tree is designed in such a way that it's easier to get back into the green tree from it. Long Fangs has slavery. This guy has army stuff. Unwin Waybridge has dust boost three, along with that uh, that very excellent tree of theirs. So I guess the question is, do we want food food two influence three with a pretty honestly pretty bad faction tree, or do we want dust boost three with a pretty good faction tree? And I think that uh, when you put it like that. 
it seems obvious. So we're going to put him in Rexos because obviously he wants a river to exploit, ideally. What is this? Uh, purple. So I'm going to look at the score screen. Uh, purple thinks they're doing quite well compared to us, and I mean everybody's doing well compared to us. Yeah, purple doesn't. Purple seems to be middle bottom of the pack. So that belief maybe it might just be bluster. It does seem like the AI does that. I've never gotten that message from the person who was actually leading in score. All right, I think we're gonna try to get the cargo docks up. Actually, building a cargo dock will help to level this up a little faster. If we build our abbey and then our cargo dock, it'll level this thing and it'll uh, obviously give us the significant boost that the cargo dock gives. Cargo docks are great. Uh... Man, the teleport is really useful. So this is six pearls. this next. Nope, still no. I do wish that uh, there was a way to tell an AI that you weren't willing to accept a certain deal and like to not offer you that specific deal again anytime soon. Uh, we gotta start getting these central markets up. There's always, always a lot of stuff to do. We do need to help the capital a little bit. We need to build out to the coast from one of these cities. Um, this city is probably going to build an Abbey of Anomalies on the, uh, the marsh here, the Moss Pearls, and that'll give us access to the ocean from here. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do when this burrow finishes. And Mapal is pretty developed and a pretty good overall city, so it having access to the ocean will be helpful. Sea monster in Nyrinus. Well, that sucks. It's not hugely relevant for me. But it will complicate the process of claiming Nyrinus. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to get into this. This is going to be a tough one. We need to go to war with red, and it needs to go, like, really well. But time is running out. We're closing up on turn 100, and we don't have a clear path. It's not good. So when, when we go for ocean play, I either have to commit really hard, I think, or, or not do it at all. We got lucky last game, and I was able to sort of... Um, the last game I played um, with the Draken... I was able to sort of commit halfway and get lucky and get a couple of regions out of it very quickly. And then with that, snowball into having a functional navy that allowed me to claim a couple more regions. Uh, this game, we didn't get anything out of our little uh, split off into the ocean. And it's really, really hurt us. Alright, so we saw some more pearls over here. This is what this army is doing. All right, Bishop Julian uh, is obviously just going to move up to first resource extractor, and then uh, through these, dust trickery is great, up to coal operator. I think it's worth it to focus on getting the mega pole leveled up. How much does it cost to just buy these? Wow, that's very expensive. Okay, and we also will need this. I think it's worth taking a little bit of time off from shipbuilding to improve my shipbuilding capability, but, I mean, this is going to hurt. So 
So the endless recycling is now actually functional in a couple of places. Is it time to research it yet? You know what? Let's pick up the artillery ship design. Let's make our... Let's diversify the capabilities of our, uh, our navy a little bit. It shouldn't just be fire ships. Hmm. A winter is coming relatively soon. Plus 20% uh, industry on all of our cities is actually pretty valuable right now, and we could really use the upgraded rate of gather on these two resources. I think I'm going to pop this. We just need to be better at building stuff, man. Alright, yeah, just keep gathering whatever pearls you can find. Hopefully this winter falls soon. We can get the uh, the gather rate up quickly. Still no. Uh, wow, that is a level six boarding vessel. I mean, I'm gonna attack it, right? It's just like free XP. Pink is already annoyed with us. And we could use the XP, as you can tell from looking at this thing. Uh, levels really do contribute a lot of stats. Although I guess we're probably not going to get any levels. We're very low on XP. Alright, so it moves three. One, two, three. Yeah. We want to start far enough away that we get to uh, we get to be the ones who determine how the attack goes. So yeah, we don't hit them very hard. But we do set him on fire. And then on his turn he burns. Okay. Man, the weather graphics look really good. I think the lightning in particular has a really great uh, appearance. Okay, maybe Red will have seen that and they'll be like, Hey, what a, what a cool bunch of guys. What a bunch of friendly cool guys. Probably not. <laughs> it's unlikely. Alright, so what does this city need next most? It needs to build out. Let's get some uh, let's get some ocean tiles. So that we can build boats here if we want to. And just try to, in general, get some leveled up districts. Alright, so Mapal now has the ab ability to contribute as well to the Navy, although I think we're going to build cargo docks here before we do anything else. In case you're not familiar with what cargo docks do, uh, they add a lot of stats. Run! Get over there. Okay, sorry. I just realized that I hadn't moved those guys to safety yet. Uh, but they give a lot of extra... They give plus five industry on every sea or lake tile that the city controls. In some places, that's not a big deal. It won't be that huge in Mapal. Although we will be able to run trade routes from the capital to Mapal over the water now, which increases their value. Um, but in the capital, for example, we do have an extra sea tile beyond the uh, beyond the one we're building the cargo dock in, and it'll matter more in places like Oyvin, where we're probably going to. Uh... Honestly, the triangle in Oyvin is going to be kind of awkwardly shaped. I started building the burrow on the wrong tile, I think. I should have built it here and gone for this triangle. Ah, whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out. It can just be a stick-shaped city. Those are fine, too. Um, but my point was the, the dock is going to be more powerful for some of our cities than others. Uh, let's... I don't know. Go see if maybe pearls are spawning up here. Oh, there's some. We don't have that perfect radar vision that I'm used to from playing Morgar anymore. Alright, we have been making a lot of dust, so let's have a look. Not a lot of new heroes, unfortunately. Uh, food Boost 3, Industry Boost 2, though, uh, is one of my favorite. Strikes Far is probably my favorite governing hero. So we're definitely going to hire him. Uh, is 
that's 240. We could get this if we pulled everything else back in. And honestly, that might be worth it. The approval boost would push us from unhappy all the way up into happy, all the way through content. And that's that's plus 20. Uh, moving out of unhappy is plus 20% dust, plus 20% science. And probably in each city, somewhere close to plus 20% food and industry as well. The cities are a little more complicated because some of them are at different approval levels. But I think that it's probably worth doing. Is This is probably enough of a bonus that it outweighs getting both of those. And it will become less necessary as we continue to uh, improve our stuff. Eventually we'll be able to stop taking it and go back to the others. Alright. Well... It hasn't been one of the more exciting videos. See what we got as far as this last last group of resources goes. Okay, we have Hyperium. And Dust Orchid, both of which are valuable. We never did pick up the Blood Crystal extractors. But I think it's more important right now to get unit relevant stuff. Honestly, oh, the Hyperium is underneath Rexos. That's cool. So as soon as we research that tech, we'll have the uh, we'll have it being extracted. That actually adds a lot of value to that tech. The fact that we won't have to take time out to build the extractor. It adds enough value to the tech that I th think we're, we're going to put it on second. I still do want this first. Alright, so Oivin can build a cargo dock. And, like, Oivin has three exploitation tiles immediately, so... We could end up building the triangle like this in Oivin. Which makes that the right place to put the cargo dock. Alright, yeah, not one of the more exciting videos. We're basically just playing SimCity for a little while here. Uh, we, we have to get a robust navy going. We need to finish the cargo dock. Finishing the cargo dock will give us access to a lot of extra industry from the dock itself, plus the extra sea exploitation, plus the leveling up of the mega pole. Once we have that, uh, we can really start pumping out our navy. Uh, we're going to be able to start building ships in Mapal on the turn after that. I'm just trying to think. Like we're we're late enough in the game that just building troops now is pretty a pretty dangerous place to be. We also need to use Rexos and or Oivin to start pumping out um, units. So Oivin needs Strikes Far. Strikes Far will solve a lot of the problems with this city. Lots of food, lots of industry. You know what I just realized? This is a a foolish mistake. I've been upset about our low industry the whole uh, video. Oh no, I never mind. I was thinking that I had researched um, researched this armor tech, which would have given us access to a to an accessory that helps with that. We might go back for this just to get better armor for the ships, or we might try to make our ship armor out of. I mean, we don't have access to Mithrite. I don't know. We're in a tricky place as far as equipping our ships goes. It's a little bit more complicated than I'd like it to be. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this episode, obviously. Come back next time. Uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to get back into this game. I think I may have been a little bit too uh, a little bit too slow. But you'll get to see. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe there's still a chance to win. Anyway, come back next time to see that, and we'll see you then.